It is good to be back. Last Sunday, um, I helped in closing uh, the church that called me into ministry in 1985, Bethany United Church of Christ in Cleveland, Ohio. And they had the most people they'd had in church in a long time, uh, probably largely because my family came. <laughs> um, they had 40 people, but they had been worshiping with six for at least a year. So, um, but something happened at the close of worship. We went to Fellowship Hall and had some time together. And then I went back into the sanctuary and there were more than 150 people there worshiping. At noon, the Church Emmanuel, who had purchased the building on the corner of 41st and Store, a Pentecostal church that is Spanish speaking, now bilingual, um, was in service already, and they asked me to come down to the front of the sanctuary. I had met some of the musicians before the worship service, but they stood and had a standing ovation as I came down front. It was a little embarrassing. Um, but then they anointed me and put their hands on me and prayed this beautiful a cappella four-part piece to bless me and anoint me. So in the same day, I experienced what was a death of one church and a resurrection of another. Um, so I know that God is still working, God is still speaking, God is still alive and well on the corner of 41st and Store on the west side of Cleveland. Would you join me in this time in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Our scriptural text today from Luke 24 and Acts 1 unite to lift us up. They lift us up. As you know, Luke was the author of both texts, closing his gospel of Jesus Christ with the ascension of Christ into heaven and then opening his magnificent story of the, of the apostles and the rise of the church, a book I like to call the Gospel of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit speaks in Acts 46 times. That's a lot of speaking by the Spirit. And so he brings these two stories together, the end of one, the beginning of the other. They're told a little differently, but it's Luke. He can do what he wants. It's his story. Before rising into heaven, Jesus leaves them with a blessing, and he gives them power from the Holy Spirit to carry on God's work and mission on earth. His rising gives way to their rising. It's very important in this beautiful and simple handing over of his mission vision. Jesus embodies this simple truth. If you want to help yourself up, lift somebody else up. I want to hear everybody say it. If you want to help yourself up, let's say that. If you want to help yourself up, lift somebody else up. I'll come back to that in a minute. It was said of the great preacher, teacher, mystic, and prof prophetic witness of justice, the Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, that one time in Boston University Chapel, knowing Dr. Thurman, it was probably more than once, but on one occasion in, March, in the Marsh Chapel there, he began his sermon simply like this. And his eyes were up, and his eyes stayed up. And then finally his eyes came down after a long time of silence and looking up, and he saw everybody else looking up. And he said to them, what are your eyes seeing as you look up? And they were naturally wondering what his eyes were seeing as he was looking up. They were all looking up. They were all being changed by the power of God's Spirit alive in Marsh Chapel. They were up. Their eyes were up. Their spirits were up. And when we are up, nothing can bring us down. When we're up, nothing can tear us down. Up. There is something beautiful and good about looking up. We feel it when we do it, when our eyes are drawn to the high branches of trees, when they're drawn even further to the skies and then to the clouds and then to the, to the heavens, when they're drawn in the night to the starry 
abyss or a light that shows in the far distance. We're taken away by grandeur. As Abraham Lincoln put it, during the Civil War, he said, I can see how a person could look down on the earth and claim to be an atheist. But there is no way anyone who has ever lived can look to the heavens and not believe in God. There are wonderful moments in our lives when our eyes are drawn up together. Our eyes unite in an upward gaze at fireworks each 4th of July weekend. Some of us like fireworks so much that we go to a couple different fireworks. We go to Red, White, and Boom, because we love it, right? But then we go to our local fireworks, and some of us sneak in a couple others that are around the corner and down the street. Fireworks draw us up. They draw our spirits up. They draw everything up, right? They're at this wonderful moment of rising. But there's also some of us in recent nights who have seen the northern lights. We've seen them drawn to the color colorful display in the northern skies as the uh, coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. You know what they are. They're the things that blast off the surface of the sun. And a huge geomagnetic solar storm. I had to practice that one. Slamming into the earth, watching these high skies, this is what the sun does to us at night. It gives us the northern lights. Now, I must warn you, you may have power allergies too. <laughs> so, Eric's like, yes. <laughs> and on a beautiful spring afternoon, Monday, April 8th, all our eyes were looking directly at the sun, hopefully with some protective glasses on, as the moon aligned with the sun in a total solar eclipse at 3.08 p.m. It was beautiful. No matter where we were, we were looking up. And I've heard wonderful stories from some of us from all over the countryside of Ohio and beyond that saw the total eclipse that day. No matter what your location, that one moment was spectacular. Up. It's not only beautiful and unifying and spectacular to look up at fireworks and northern lights and total solar eclipses, it actually gives us peace. It gives us peace to look up. 95% or more of our time is spent like this. Some of us are already doing it with our iPhone right now. All the way into the sermon, you're already on it. You can do it. Put it down a second. Get your eyes back up. 95% of the time, we're looking like this or looking like that. Straight down or straight ahead. When we look up, we connect to the stars, we connect to God's universe, we connect to divine love, we connect to the mystic, to the spiritual, to the meditative states of being. Also, one of the gifts of a massive cathedral is the opportunity to look up. So for those of you who've never been in this place before, and if you do not look up, you lost your opportunity. So young women, I'm asking you to look up. <laughs> and all of us can join you. As we learn from Zora Neale Hurston in her book, Our Eyes Are Watching God, by looking up, we see the face of God and we know the presence of God. Now, in a recent initiative from the American Institute of Architects, they were urging people to look up more. They had a reason because as architects, they want people to see the glorious things that are built above the eye line, right? So I want us to do this to honor the people in the American Institute of Architects this Mother's Day. I want us to look up right in this space. Look up. What do you see? If you look up there at the very highest point, the window, Jesus is ascending. He is ascending on a rainbow. He is ascending to the throne of God. If you look up over here, you see the Gladden window. If you look up over here, you see the friendship window. If you look up in the middle of the sanctuary, you see the days of creation. And for the choir, you can go behind the Beckerod organ and see the rose window. The rest of us see the Beckerod organ, but our eyes are taken up. And if you're careful in your looking up, you can see the arch angels, the angels in the arches that are holding the beams of the sanctuary in place. We can see so many things in this space when we look up. 
we can see so many beautiful sights when we look up. When we do this, we put ourselves in connection with the lofty, infinite being of God, and we contemplate and embrace our place in his universe. Looking up in this room, in this church, in general, will affect your mood and your patterns of thought and your faith in God and one another. Looking up. Now, I was really getting into looking up this weekend as I was thinking about this sermon. And then five young women made me look down. I had to look down. And so I brought my eyes back down and I started reading the amazing stories of the five young women we are honoring this morning, the 2024 Schumacher recipients. I saw Linaya, and I saw Alyssa, and I saw Alvina, and Kaylee, and Macy. I saw five young women whose eyes are watching God. Wait, hang on, not yet. <laughs> I told them they were gonna have to stand when they heard their names. I'm coming to that, that's okay. That's on me. That's a Reverend Tim faux pas. <laughs> anyway, so I saw them looking back, especially in the midst of what you have faced and your families, you could be looking down all the time. You could literally be looking down all the time if you would choose to do that. You could look down, and if you look down, you could get stuck looking down, right? But what I see when I was looking at what, who you are and reading about your amazing witness of love for your families and others, I read words that's, that I heard before that came through to me. If you want to help yourself up, lift somebody else up. Embodying this, these five young women and their life stories are amazing. And they have been shared by their mentors and pastors it reminds me, though, of something a beloved mentor of mine taught me years ago in Birmingham, Alabama. I don't know if you know the name, you should. One of the great leaders of the civil rights movement, black Baptist preacher, Bishop Abraham Lincoln Woods. And Bishop Woods was, I was in church with him one day, and he said, you know what, Tim? He said, there's too many of us that are too heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. Now. I'm sure you've heard that, Lanaya, haven't you? As your pastor said that. I'm gonna give all the credit and the, and the credibility to Bishop Woods, but I think it's others have said it too. You are so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Well, if you think about that, that's not how you all have ended up. You're both. You can be both and. You can be heavenly minded and earthly good, and I love that. Jesus could have easily said on the Mount of Ascension in Bethany, that he was rising to be with his father on the right hand of the throne of glory and that he wouldn't pay attention to his disciples anymore, but that's not what he said. He said, you're in charge, you're my witnesses, so take my good news to the ends of the earth. All five of you have been abiding witnesses of God's love. Now I'm gonna call you up. <laughs> Lanaya, would you stand for a second? Lanaya. You have given yourself in love to your whole family while your mom has battled cancer. You have given extra loving care to your younger brothers and sisters, and you've allowed your father to keep his eyes pro pro focused on your mom's care. And that's an amazing gift. You've been amazing and faithful all the time. Lanaya, thank you. And God bless you for lifting others and for shining Christ's light. One more time. So, Alyssa, your love for Luke, whose name our gospel writer has, has been done because you absolutely adore your brother, right? But in the words of your school counselor, Courtney, you are unwavering in your Christian spirit, shining brightly through your daily actions and inspire others around you. You spread your love to others through your work with others who live with other disabilities in Licking County through the YMCA. You are a beacon of light. Alyssa, thank you for lifting up Luke and others and shining Christ's light. <laughs> Alvina, Alvina, your commitment is rooted in your deep Christian faith. Yeah, those things bang, don't they? <laughs> 
it's, it's rooted in your deep Christian faith. It's made manifest in the dedicated love and care you show for your father and your brother. You give yourself to them, but it doesn't stop there. You shine your light at school through the uh, Zuva Afro-Caribbean dancers and the Fort Hayes Career Center surgical support team. Oh my gosh. Alvina, thank you for lifting up your father and brother and for lifting up others and shining Christ's light. Thank you. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee, today must be hard. It's Mother's Day. It's bittersweet, I'm sure. On this Mother's Day, you have to be missing your mom, who battled cancer and passed three years ago. Shortly before her death, you went the extra mile and went to learn to drive so that you could drive and care for others, right? And then also your grandfather's stroke and your grandmother's being partially paralyzed following her epileptic seizures. You've been through a lot, my friend. And in the midst of your own grief, you did step up big time. When things looked down for your family, you looked up. You learned to drive. And when you did, you drove your sisters to the things they needed to get to and help your father as he was facing care for his parents as well. I just need to say, you must be a really good driver because you've driven a lot. <laughs> so, you were taking your sisters to practices and games and getting your grandmother to her doctor's appointments while cooking the meals as well. You are a beacon of strength and light to all around you, Kaylee. Thank you for lifting them up, for lifting up the people in your family and your life. You are shining Christ's light. Thank you. <laughs> Macy, you can see now they're all standing, right? <laughs> so, Macy, you cared for your Aunt Jill and your Nana with such love and devotion. You did all that while battling the greatest challenge of all, a curveball on the outside corner of the plate. You can hit a curveball, I hear, on the outside corner of the plate. You know, I love softball. <laughs> so you won me with your softball stories, but you cared for your Aunt Jill battling mental illness, your grandma, Nana, who was battling stage four brain cancer, and you cared for each of them and both of them. You were present to her, your Nana, when she joined Jesus in heaven, when she went up. In the words of Lynette Emmert, Emmert, your guidance counselor at Liberty Union, you showed love, compassion, empathy, and reassurance to your family that everything would be okay and that you will see them again. In the words of Jesus, he says it this way, I will see you again and our hearts will rejoice and no one can take our joy from us. You live that every day. So thank you, Macy, for lifting up your aunt, your nana, and for shining Christ's light. <laughs> we would all be wise to listen to and live into the words, if you want to help yourself up, lift somebody else up. These are words to live by. They're words that we should never uh, walk away from that will never let us down. When we're lifting somebody else up, things get better for us too. My friends, look up. Seeing the ascending Christ smiling on your life, look up, look up, and see the beautiful light of God coming down to greet you. Look up and see the gifts of eternity extending from earth to heaven and heaven to earth, and look up when you are down and see the hand of a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a stranger, a church friend, raising their hand to reach your hand, extending their hands to you and lifting you up. Never, ever, ever stop looking up. Amen. <laughs>